Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and before we get going, I wanted to remind you that iTrust Capital, one of my sponsors, they just added um, they just added ACH transfers, so you can literally set up your bank account to transfer money into your IRAs at iTrust Capital, and I couldn't remember if I had mentioned they just added Shibu Inu, and coming soon they have the Avalanche token, neither of which I invest in. But that doesn't mean you can't if that's your thing. Okay, yesterday Charles Gasparino tweeted this out. Tomorrow, stay tuned for our XRP opus that is exceedingly fair to all sides with crypto gal Eleanor Tarrant taking the lead because XRP Crypto Wolf was asking about it. Um, the way this is worded tends to make me a little nervous because, no, I, I'm not saying you don't cover all sides. You should. But... With everything that we know, man, it's it's tough. To, I mean, we 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 we've got video where they're covering where where they're literally helping whales to hide purchases of Ethereum in the pre-sale. So um, that's a pretty tough thing to. It's really not. It's not really that that particular thing is not really a thing that's like show both sides. It is what it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so un unless unless of course. They want to explain what they meant by that, which I can't imagine that they want to go on the record and even have that conversation. If they do, Joseph Lubin or anybody involved with helping to disguise whale purchases at the Ethereum presale is welcome on this channel any time to have that discussion. We'll, I'll, I'm all, they're also welcome to come on any time to talk about the timeline and tell us if we're wrong on anything. They're welcome to go, I'll play any of the videos of their own words and they can tell me, explain further and tell me how their words are wrong or whatever, or if that we misunderstood their words anytime, any of them. Okay. That goes for anyone. All right. Uh, associate anyone in any of those videos. We'll, we'll do that. Um, breaking news, a consortium of roughly 70 Japanese firms, including the country's three big Three mega banks said to aim uh, aims to launch a yen based digital currency in 2022. Surprise, surprise. Do you know who is more active in Japan and has been and actually is partially owned by the Japanese, one of the by SBI holdings? That would be Ripple. Okay, moving along. Wanted to show you this Co Coinbase support. We're experiencing connectivity issues again across Coinbase.com and Coinbase Pro. This may cause failed trades, delayed transactions, and unexpected behavior on the web page and mobile apps. We're back at it to get this fixed and restore full service. Da, da, da. I'm not going through the rest of that. You get the picture. Now, this came out, I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Ripple, we're excited to announce our partnership with the Republic of Palau to explore, explore the country's first national digital currency using the XRP ledger. Here's the article. That is uh, the country Republic of Palau. Um, the partnership will initially focus on developing strategies for cross-border payments and USD-backed digital currency for Palau. This could see implementation of, uh, implementation of the world's first government-backed national stable coin in the first half of 2022 for which Ripple will provide Palau with technical business design and policy support. Meanwhile, exploring a USD-backed stable coin and associated use cases such as corporate registry on the XRP ledger could provide a viable alternative to central, banking digi central bank digital currencies for countries like Palau. Okay? Then we had, I, somebody asked me, where's Palau? So I went, decided I'd go to my Google Maps. Looks like they are uh, um, east of the Philippines and west of Guam. That is Guam. And what's interesting is if you look at the photos on, um, on uh, Google of Palau, the Republic of Palau, 
they have old um, U.S. These are tanks. So apparently, um, when you go to the Wikipedia page, um, this, if you go down to the United States, it says during World War II, the United States captured Palau from Japan in 1944 after the costly Battle of Palau, when more than 2,000 Americans and 10,000 Japanese were killed and later, at the, uh, and later the Battle of Angwar. In 1945-1946, the United States reestablished control on the Philippines and managed Palau through the Philippine uh, capital of Manila. So anyway, now it's uh, the way I read it. And, and by the way, Digital Perspectives, Brad Combs brought this to my attention. Um, and so I want to give him uh, full credit. Go to You can go to his YouTube, Digital Perspectives. Or, and, and also his uh, Twitter, go give him a follow, definite follow. Now, the way I read that, the way I read this, um, this is um, more or less a quasi United States island, which is, which makes things kind of interesting because I believe, I believe Brad, I saw a tweet, I forgot to pull up where Brad comes, asked the question, is this a U.S. sandbox, in other words, to build a digital currency currency in a small on a small island as a sandbox so that to make sure you're ready to issue it at a on a, with a larger country great question monica long weighed in um incredible potential for ripple's partnership with palau the world's first government-backed national stable coin could become could come to the xrp ledger thanks to its custom token functionality next year now this I was I saw this from Bank XRP when I saw this Palau thing, and it reminded me of this this exchange with Brad Growinghouse and and this Ross Leckow from who was at the IMF at the time. Listen, you want to take one, go for it. The first one's for you, IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we look, stunned Ross into silence with that one. For that to happen, okay, under the current legal framework, some country would have to use a crypto asset as its currency. How about them apples, folks? Okay. Uh, Ron Hammond, and this is from yesterday too. Today, the Senate Banking Committee sent letters to stablecoin issuers, Coinbase, Gemini, Circle Paxos, Trust Token Center, and Binance US about general business practices and safeguards. Turnaround time, December 3rd. This is likely a sign of an upcoming hearing. Tether was also sent a letter, but it appears it may have not uh, been in the original press release draft I saw. Thanks for the flag, uh, Jerry Brito. Um, things are heating up for Tether. The Senate uh, sent a letter, uh, U.S. Senate sent a letter requesting immediate information about their backings, redemption process, and activities due to several market integrity concerns. Tether has been given 10 days to respond. All right, moving along. I found some new video of our old buddy, Joseph Lubin. In, in this clip, I'll let you watch the clip and then I'll pose the question. So our company consensus has been um, very prominent since the start of the Ethereum ecosystem. I, I can attest that JP Morgan was there uh, right from the start uh, before uh, public mainnet was, was even launched. Um, if a person can, can buy uh, from any number of different identities, we may limit the size, the unit size of the sale um, just to From those two video clips, A, Joseph Lubin tells us that JP Morgan was, was working with them before the public mainnet was launched. 
And so, and then in the second clip, we know that he, from his own words, that he was, he was teaching whales how he could help disguise their purchases if they wanted privacy, large purchases. So my question is, if JP Morgan was there before the public mainnet was launched, did they buy some Ethereum? Did they disguise their purchase? How much did they buy? If they, if they bought, did they sell any while Ethereum was a security? Because Bill Hinman said it was a security and then became a non-security because it, because it became de more decentralized. So did they sell a security to, did they sell it in the secondary market? Has JP Morgan ever answered the question, did they buy any Ethereum at the launch? Has Consensus, Joseph Lubin, Vitalik Buterin, anybody from Ethereum ever answered any questions about who bought Ethereum? Because we've got him in this video saying that they helped to disguise purchasers. So if they helped to disguise purchasers, when is the SEC or the, the, um, the law enforcement, Justice Department, FBI, when are they going to be asked, when is somebody in the United States of America from law enforcement going to give two craps about whether or not something illegal went on here involving sales to Americans or purchases or secondary market. When is that going to matter? Because it hasn't mattered till now. Do we still have a United States of America? And then there's this, John Deaton, Ethereum Investors, the SEC is now stating, please be advised that the SEC has not made any public statements regarding the status of Ethereum. It states the above, uh, the above, despite the Hinman speech being on the SEC government, government website, I won't be surprised if it soon removes the speech. And he's retweeting this from a guy who sent the SEC a letter and said, I just got a quick question about cryptocurrency. Is the coin Ethereum a security? Yes or no? And the SEC replies, and you can see it better if I drop that. They say, thank you for contacting the U contacting the U.S. Uh, SEC. Please be advised that Ethereum is not registered with the SEC. Additionally, please be advised that the SEC has not made any public statements regarding the status of Ethereum. Well, Hinman did, and he had the SEC logo in the background when he did, and he did it at an official Yahoo uh, conference. And so that's just a freaking lie on its face. It just is. It's a lie. We've got a, we've got a government entity, the SEC, who is lying to it, the public. Not only are they not protecting the investors they claim they were they're they're there to protect and care about so much and were literally formed to protect, but they're lying. This is a lie. They came out and intentionally gave guidance to the markets. We've got the video where people in the SEC, SEC commissioners said that's what they were doing. Remember, I remember Robert Jackson? I, I'm happy to pull his clips because he's my favorite SEC. He, in fact, let me go ahead and say it. Robert Jackson is the official SEC commissioner of the Digital Asset Investor channel, and that's because he's my favorite. I love Robert Jackson. I think he's great. Okay, so <laughs> as if this can't get more insulting, here we go. Gary Gensler, who is literally... Not only is he not representing or protecting those investors, not only will he not even respond to this over 60,000 investors, but now he's going to flip you the bird even further. He says, mark your calendars next week on December 1st. I'll be joining former SEC chairman Clayton for a fireside chat at the 2021 DACM Summit. Okay, December 1st, right? So he's you got one SEC, one guy that's a SEC chairman who is flipping us the bird and he's going to join for a for a uh, discussion another SEC chairman who flipped us the bird remember remember anybody remember Jay Clayton the SEC chairman who dropped the ripple lawsuit and ruined all of your Christmases last year he didn't have to do that he, he could have at least had the guts to stay and face the fire himself instead of dropping a lawsuit and then walking out the door but he couldn't do that he did it and it all, it feels real personal too, because he did it right going into like two days before Christmas and then leaves that with all of you XRP holders out there. So now two of them are going to sit down on a stage and further flip us the bird. This is where they're going to be. And you'll see that it's, um, it is, uh, brought to you by Solidi Solidus Labs and these other companies, the keynote speakers, Gary Gensler, this lady, Jay Clayton, there's Chris Giancarlo. 
And um, just by coincidence, we've also got, um, actually, let me show you. I thought I had it pulled up. There's that. There's that. There's that. Um, this is Solidus Labs. Their investors are Google, Microsoft, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, this one, this one. Chris Giancarlo is one of their advisors, along with Daniel Gorfein. These two guys are the uh, di digital, um, what is it called? The Digital Dollar Project. This guy is an ex-SEC guy. I didn't really look into these two guys. But um, let me show you again. This is the uh, this is the Gary Gensler thing, December 1st, DACOM Summit. Look who else was at the DACOM Summit back in July, July 21st. It's a small world, isn't it, folks? Well, as long as we've got Joseph Lubin up on the page, let me show you something else because I have a whistleblower alert. There's a security issuance in progress, and to make matters worse, I think, can't be sure, but I think Joseph Lubin is literally laughing at the SEC and Congress while he issues the security. Don't take my word for it. It's his words. A low cost, uh, extremely low uh, carbon footprint or energy footprint sidechain using uh, exactly the same Ethereum technologies, uh, MetaMask and Pura. Um, that uh, had a bridge, uh, so it was intimately connected to Ethereum mainnet, um, so you can move different kinds of tokens across the bridge. Um, and it was also a very interested in enabling the creator. Uh, so a creator DAO um, is in formation, uh, and it will be funded by uh, a large number of uh, Palm tokens. Uh, I shouldn't perhaps use the, the term funded because these palm tokens have no value. Um, as, as we all know, they're, they're just nice tokens uh, that, that we're putting in, into, uh, into the DAO and, uh, and people. Look at that, know that, look at just... that look on his face again. He's literally, he's, he's, he's laughing at what, what, what he knows that they've gotten away with. He is, he, he, they have a token factory. They have a money printing machine and it came from the Bill Henman Ethereum free pass, but it's not just that it was, it was the three prongs. It was the Ethereum free pass to call it a commodity instead of a security, keep everything else in purgatory, except for Bitcoin. The second prong was to have a token factory. So then you've got a money printer. And the third prong was so that they could do DeFi only on Ethereum. And then have Gary Gensler and the boys go after anybody else who's trying to do DeFi except being issued off of Ethereum. That was the game. That's what we caught them doing. And he's literally laughing about it. And this is not like years ago. This is September 28, 2021. This guy... Did, he couldn't just accept the free pass. He had to gloat, and he continues to gloat, which is why I'm going to rewind. I want to make sure everybody gets a look at that. Tom Emmer, are you listening? Hester Pierce, you're supposed to care. Gary Gensler, I know you don't care, but watch watch him smirk. As, as we all know, they're, they're just nice tokens uh, that, that we're putting in. Let's into, go back. Uh, I want you to hear him say it's a fun, uh, raising uh, funds. A large number of uh, Palm tokens. Uh, I shouldn't. Wait a minute. The creator, so a creator DAO um, is in formation uh, and it will be funded by uh, a large number of uh, Palm tokens. Uh, I shouldn't perhaps use the, the term funded because these Palm tokens have no value. Um, as, as we all know, they're, they're just nice tokens uh, that, that we're putting in, into, uh, into the DAO and uh, and people can petition the DAO uh, for some of those tokens uh, in exchange for getting some work done. And, and that's what many of these are. They're, they're entrepreneurs, computer scientists that are raising money from the public, and the public is anticipating profits. And that's why uh, Congress painted with a broad brush. And the investing public is relying on some group of entrepreneurs and computer scientists for their profits. And um, I'm glad to work with projects, work with Congress. If you want to repeal the laws as they are, uh, so that fewer people are protected against fraud in these markets. All right. So there you go. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that there's a security issuance in progress. But it's not one. It's several. And I forgot to show you this. 
This is from the Palm website that he was just talking about. A new NFT ecosystem for culture and creativity built efficiently with Ethereum. And these are, I guess, the investors. There's consensus right there. That's Joseph Lubin. And these guys are literally in a position right now where they can issue tokens at will. Okay? And don't you think for a minute. Don't you think for a minute that these things are not going to have value. Just because they don't have value upon issuance, that doesn't mean anything. The whole point of that Ethereum free pass, it was bigger than just getting Ethereum. Yeah, it was about getting Ethereum, like Lowell Ness said, it was about getting Ethereum out from under securities laws. But there was a bigger reason to do that. That's why we've been exposing this. And all we, I don't want to destroy Ethereum. I want to level playing field for all digital assets. That's all.